Welcome to Made in Alpharetta, the only podcast dedicated to showcasing what makes Alpharetta so awesome. Today's show is brought to you by the Alpharetta Convention and Visitors Bureau. I'm your host, Kathleen Sturgeon. My friends and I are always trying to find fun things to do around town, aside from going to the bar or going out to eat. And going to an escape room seems to always sit high on our list. So I'm pretty excited for today's guest. Be sure to listen for the secret word during the episode to enter to win a gift certificate to Urban Escape Games, which is valid for up to four people. And without further ado, joining me today in the studio is Mary Oaks, the owner of Urban Escape Games and Alpharetta. Welcome. Thank you. We're happy to have you on. Yeah, excited. I have uh, quite a long history, I guess, with Escape Games. My best friend, who went to Alfred High School with me, she was also in the band, is obsessed with escape rooms. And she and I have probably done like maybe 10 together or something. We've wow. done a lot of them. We actually did one in New Orleans for her bachelorette party. <laughs> so it's like a, I mean, it's really a good go-to for people to do. So I guess, can you start by telling me why did you guys want to open Urban Escape Games? Yeah, well, um, my husband likes to call me a serial entrepreneur. Um, so I've always had different businesses um, over the course of several years. And my son, uh, Preston, was interested in going to the Coast Guard, and he got accepted to do a one-week program there. Um, so our entire family went um, to see him off, and then we were going to go on vacation while he was there working hard. Um, but the last night, um, my daughter, Kelsey, uh, said, hey, before you know, we sit we say goodbye to him. Let's do something different, something unique. And we saw that there was um, something called an escape game. We never heard of it before. So um, we went. If my husband wasn't with us, we probably would not have done it. It was in a really bad area of, of Connecticut <laughs> where we were at. Um, and we just decided that, okay, we'll go ahead and we'll try this. Um, we did it afterwards. Um, they wouldn't show us the end. And we were pretty bummed because we didn't know if we were like one puzzle away or several puzzles away. Uh, there wasn't a theme. Uh, they actually did lock us in the room um, and they handcuffed us. Oh. So um, afterwards, um, we had a lot of discussion at dinner time about it. And my background is in social work. I have a master's degree in social work. And I said, how cool would this be if you could alter this and really make it about team building? And um, uh, so anyway, um, a few months later, decided to open one. Um, we were the first in uh, Georgia. Um, we wanted it to not have any morbid storylines, but to be, you know, just fun and engaging for everybody. Um, we got a team of people together. We designed all of our games in-house, um, uh, and that's something very unique. And then we do corporate team building Monday through Friday, and then we're open to the public on Friday evenings and Saturdays. And so uh, when we designed the game, we really designed it to be about everyone having to participate and, and to work together to communicate, to investigate, ex you know, et cetera. Um, so it's been a lot of fun. And one thing we also do with corporate team building and even with our friends and family groups that come on the weekends is we always do a debrief at the end. Um, it's a lot lighthearted on the weekends, but um, for the corporate groups, we want to talk about how their team progressed through the game. And we want to also, in every case, whether it be on the weekend or weekday, uh, make sure people see if they didn't escape how far they were from escaping so they understand you know they were one puzzle away or a few puzzles away um and we always like to make it you know we like to say we're hr approved and family friendly because we we want everyone to feel welcome yeah when did you guys open we opened um in 2014 okay um so we're about ready to pro we're in our about ready to go into our fifth year oh wow and why did you choose alpharetta well, longtime residents of Alpharetta, mm -hmm. love Alpharetta. Um, but also Alpharetta, you know, being the tech corridor that it is, it just made sense, um, especially since we were going to do something very different that other escape game places don't do, and that is focus on corporate Monday through Friday. Um, so it really made sense to us with all the, the large companies in the area um, and how fast Alpharetta has grown over the years to just plan it here where this is home for us, so... Yeah. And was it hard since you said that you guys were the first one in in Georgia, I was going to say Atlanta, but in Georgia to open, was that difficult? It was interesting. We had some um, some hurdles. Uh, one hurdle was uh, the fire marshal 
He was like, (laughs) not so keen on this whole idea of (laughs) locking people in a room. But we created, you know, all of our technology is designed in-house. We created this whole red light, green light system. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of the um, fire marshal's employees came and said, oh, went back to the fire marshal and said, hey, they're locking the door. And we're like, no, we're not locking the door. Uh That's the beauty of Alpharetta is that. You know, it is very welcoming. We were able to go talk to the fire marshal. He welcomed us. Once we explained that it was a red light, green light system that the doors never officially locked, he was like, oh, okay, great. And then, you know, they were probably a few months into opening. We had all the police, fire department, et cetera, come and um, do our games and have a great time. So, um, But yeah, it was, you know, just those kind of things because people just didn't know. It was more about educating people what an escape game is. And now um, one thing we like try to pride ourselves is, is that now that there's a lot of escape game places everywhere that we really try to focus on ours not being physically challenging, that you don't have to crawl, um, that everyone can participate um, and that there's no, you know, uh, scary things happening in the games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does your family work there with you? Um, just my daughter, Kelsey. Um, she works there. Um, she graduated a couple years ago and um, came on, and it's been great having her work beside me. That's cool. I bet that is fun. Yeah, and it's always a fun atmosphere there. So, I mean, everyone's always having a good time whether they escape or not. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> true. Uh, it is. I can attest to that, yeah. <laughs> so how has the company grown over the years? Have you Did you initially start out with the original four rooms, or did you add on rooms? We um, had four different games. We're actually on our sixth game design. One game um, has already retired. We're about ready to retire our second game. Uh, The Magician's Room will be retired and another game uh, started. And then we also created a conference escape game where we come on site for large groups. We've done groups up to about 1,400. Um, It was over the course of a whole day. Um, But we'll do large groups where we'll come and do several hundred people uh, one time or over the course of, you know, the day, depending upon the conference that they're having or the event that they're having. And you guys have an, a, an escape rate of 37%. Is that right? That's the escape rate currently. Yes. And it does change. Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> um, we want it to be challenging and engaging. Um, so, you know, if it was 80%, you know, would that be very fun for you? Oh, true, true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. So you guys must be pretty smart. I mean, if you come up with all of these games and systems and clues and stuff. Um, we have a pretty strong design team, and they, they do a really good job about making sure that no puzzle is the same in mm-hmm. every game. So as we create more games, obviously, it's a little more challenging. Um, but uh, we have a lot of fun, too, creating the games. Um and my focus isn't so much on the technology and that. I just more focus on making sure that there's enough going on that the teams really have to work together. Yeah. And do you guys, how much of a part do you play in making the games? Like, do you sit down with the team and bring ideas to them and say, this is what I'd like to see in another room? You know, we'll spend hours just brainstorming the name it's Mm -hmm. amazing how many hours it takes to create a game most people think oh you could probably create this in a you know maybe a few weeks a few months it takes a really long time um and as we've created more and more games we don't want to duplicate anything so we really it it pushes us to think outside the box just like our customers who come and have to think outside the box to solve things but um everyone contributes different things to to creating the puzzles yeah. And how many do you do you like playing these games or not playing, but participating in these games yourself? Oh, yes. Yeah. And how many have you done? Would you say roughly if you could guesstimate? Well, probably. I think you've probably done more than me, but probably <laughs> 10, 10 to 15 um, after we decided to open um, very limited on going other places because I want to make sure I'm far away. I don't want to get ideas, especially our design team, to get ideas. I want them to come up with their own ideas. Mm-hmm. So um, we pretty much limit, you know, we want to be far away anyway. Um, we don't want to do anything in the Atlanta area. Mm-hmm. Do you go through your own rooms or no, because you know what 
everything's gonna we, it's gonna happen yeah we know <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll we'll test puzzles like um we just created for our new game um uh a puzzle um and so our design team had some of the people who didn't work on that puzzle try to solve it mm-hmm. so. were they able to Yes, they were. <laughs> you would expect that though, right? Like, yes, I would. From those people. <laughs> and so what happens if people don't escape? You don't, like you were saying earlier, you don't actually lock them in. Correct. And so if they don't escape, what happens then? Um, the game master, who's basically like their team coach, comes into the room and then shows them what the end of the game would be like. Because some places make you come back and pay, but we feel like that's not right, you know? You're there. You need to see what the end would be like. Um, you've already done most of the game anyway. Um, so they'll spend time, uh, sh- he or she'll spend time showing you the end of the game. And then it could, a lot of times there's lots of questions because you were working on certain puzzles with maybe a group. Another group was working on different puzzles. You may not have seen how certain things opened. So um, spend some time answering questions and then just talking again about how your group progressed through the game. Yeah, I appreciate that as a consumer because it's very frustrating when you don't make it out and then they're like, okay, bye. Right. And you're like, right. but what was the end? Like, how yeah. was it? How close were we? Yeah. And that was our experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were, I just like, ah, oh, that just bothered us, you know? Yeah. And, and I just knew that if we were going to do this, I wanted to make sure that we spent time in the debrief. And that's part of, I think, us being unique. We don't know anyone else who does debrief. Like we're taking notes our game masters are taking notes in the process. So that way, when they come in to do the debrief, they're able to talk about how your team, you know, progressed through the game. Yeah, yeah. I like the companies that kind of work you through it afterwards, especially, rather than just kind of making it like this big competition competition but when they help you afterwards and say you know like here's what you did well here's what you could have improved on or you guys spent 30 minutes on this one uh question when you had it at the beginning you just kind of went in a different direction so I always appreciate it when we get talked through it afterwards and kind of learn from it that way and it helps you I mean even outside of the outside of the room like it helps you just kind of learn about yourself right and how you kind of work and how your friends work so it's a very unique thing to go through so that's pretty cool that you get to do it like all day yeah well I think you know wasn't it Plato that said do you learn a lot through play um about each other and it really is true so um you learn about the different you know the different roles people play and you know who who was the strong in the communication and getting the clues who you know took the leadership role and tried to get people dividing and conquering etc so yeah and do you, I don't know if you know this off the top of your head, but what has been the fastest somebody has escaped from one of your rooms? I think right now left on the clock was like 19 minutes and 38 seconds. They were very experienced um, gamers is what I like to call them. <laughs> and how much time are they given? An hour, 60 minutes. An hour. Okay. So they did it in about 40-ish minutes? Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is yeah, I know, especially with the clock sitting there, kind of like looking at you. <laughs> it's a little intimidating, like, OK, OK, I'm watching the seconds pass by. And so have you ever had anybody freak out in a room or overreact? Or what is the weirdest thing that you've seen that you can say? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I we've had some people um, come and, you know, maybe corporate signed them up and they were very they're claustrophobic mm-hmm. and they didn't you know know if they could handle being in the room but explaining to them that it's never officially locked um and sometimes they'll check the door you mm-hmm. know after the game master leaves the room make sure it's not officially locked um but i've had a, um one or two people come and say you know it was almost therapeutic to them to you know make the room feel like it's locked but they're not really locked um So I don't know if that answers your question or not. No, yeah. Were those people claustrophobic who said that? Yes. Okay. Yes, diagnosed claustrophobic. So they liked the chance to be confined without actually being confined. Exactly. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I wouldn't think about that. So we are now going to take a brief break to hear a word from our sponsor. We'll be right back. Planning a wedding, reunion, or corporate meeting in Alpharetta? The Alpharetta Convention and Visitor Bureau offers a variety of complimentary event planning resources to help you during your event or meeting planning process. Their expert team will help you find event venues and meeting space around the area, 
Secure group hotel room nights at Alpharetta's 25 hotels and provide you with free visitor information to share with your Alpharetta hotel guests. Visit awesomealpharetta.com to learn more. All right, welcome back to Made in Alpharetta, and we are joined today by Mary, who is the owner of Urban Escape Games. Welcome back. Thank you. So can you kind of give me a rundown of the rooms that you guys have currently? And you said you are retiring or in the process of retiring one and then bringing on another one. Correct. So can you kind of go through the different options people have? Yeah, we have our Jewel Heist game um, where you're trying to obtain the Priscilla Diamond. Uh, from Kimmy Braxton. She, little do people know, she's a longtime resident of Alpharetta, world renowned thief. And uh, now she's passed away and she's challenging all the thieves of the world to see if they can steal from the greatest thief. And then we have um, the CDC lockdown. You're taking a tour of the CDC here in Alpharetta and something goes wrong on your tour. Um, and then uh, there's the FBI mafia. That's the one that took place of our murder mystery. Um, and the FBI mafia. Uh, Vinny's been doing some illegal activity, and um, he was arrested. You only have an hour, and your team needs to go in and see if you can find the illegal activities that he's been doing. Um, and then the fourth one is uh, the magician's room. Uh, Mr. Magic has some magical tricks, um, and he's looking for some apprentice, so he's trying to see if you can solve all of his magical tricks. Um, that is the game that's going to be retiring here soon. Uh, don't know the exact date. Um, and they're asking me to keep it a surprise Ooh. on um, what they're doing. But it's going to be a really cool game. Do you do you know what it is? I, oh, yes, I do know. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't ever surprise you with the surprise. Correct. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> That's But you're excited about it? Yes. It, it, it will be a, a, a crowd pleaser. Oh, okay. Yes. I'll have to come check it out when it opens. Yes. <laughs> so where do the ideas come from? You said that you guys sit and brainstorm and think about everything, but do you like already have a running list in your own head of somewhere down the line it'd be cool to have something like this eventually? Um, no, we really just, um, br you know, get together, come up with different ideas. Um, we want it to be, you know, a friendly family theme um, that corporate will enjoy. And so we always start kind of there with just basically the, the storyline. Mm -hmm. And then we go from there on what puzzles then will go with that storyline. And what is the timeline from when you guys first have an idea to when you are ready to roll it out to customers? How long does that take? This one will be almost a year. Okay. So you get pretty in depth with it in that year. Oh yeah. And sometimes, you know, we have to work on, um, you know, other things that are, that we're trying to do too. Um, right now, you know, we have some different conference games coming up because of the holidays. So some larger groups. So we have to step aside sometimes from the design stage and, and, um, focus on operations, but yeah, probably about a year now it'll be before we're actually going to be launching a game almost a year. That's very cool. So if somebody was doing an escape room for the first time, what would they need to know? What tips would you give them? Well, one thing we do with every group, um, and that's something kind of unique to us, is we want you to, to kind of be prepared before you go in the room. We didn't get that experience our first yeah. time. <laughs> We're just kind of thrown in and handcuffed. Um, so um, we have a briefing room. And so for our large groups, um, we'll have them all there, seating for all of them. Um, and they'll watch a video and they'll get information, whether, I shouldn't say large group, but or small group too. Um, but we'll show them a video on how to play our games, um, then give them some tips, and then they'll actually go into the game. And then the game master, like I said, was the team coach, will give them some more information. And then, then the countdown clock starts after they watch a video that immerses them into the storyline. So how do people prepare? Can they study facts or no nothing <laughs> nothing's going to give them an advantage yeah um and that's why sometimes people pick a certain theme and they think that's going to give them an advantage you know like if you work for the cdc does that <laughs> give you an advantage um it doesn't um there's no prior knowledge that you need in any of our games um and we work hard to do that because we don't want you to feel like you need to know mm. something like before. you need to study before you come in exactly yeah. So, I mean, the biggest tip I tell a team is just to communicate and be sharing their ideas. And then we also um, 
tell them to strategize on using their clues. Um, sometimes people hold back those clues and they want to keep them to the very end. Mm -hmm. um, but strategizing as a team when to use that resource um, is real important. Yeah. And what have you heard? What feedback have you heard from customers? What do they find fun about the rooms? Like, why do you think people enjoy doing this so much? Well, I think, it, you know, for for families, like especially around the holidays, um, we have team groups that come back every year. And the one thing that uh, everyone will say is we put our phones down and we engage in this activity that no one has an advantage in doing, right? If I go do some athletic event, I might have an advantage or you might have an advantage, but here it's all the same level playing field. So, um, and afterwards, everyone talks about it, right? Like, oh my gosh, how did you do that? How did you open that, Kathleen? Like, mm -hmm. I didn't, that was so cool. I don't even know how you connected that. But you get everyone talking afterwards. And so the phones are still down. Um, and that's the one thing we hear from from families. And then from corporate, it's just uh, more just, hey, how is our team progressing? Like, we really did we didn't communicate as well. We needed to really be sharing our ideas or we didn't use our resources um, using those clues. Um, so again, it's just that engagement that happens through the game that then gives you so much to talk about after the game. Oh, I think so, yeah. I think um, our biggest thing is um, that preparation beforehand where we take the time to show them a video, give them information, and then the time that we spend with them afterwards, you know, doing the debrief, making sure that they understand what was left that they didn't escape, um, and answering all, any of their questions, and then providing them a game that's, um, that really requires everyone to have to work. It's not linear. It's everyone working together uh, to try to escape. It sounds like you, your family started off on the wrong foot with escape rooms, but in the end, it helped you out because now you're able to see like you didn't give or you didn't get any of that information. And now you want your customers to have a better experience. So it's like, an, it kind of helped you. Oh, Does that make yeah, sense? yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, that was the one thing that when we did it afterwards, um, we knew there are certain things we wanted that could make this so much more engaging. Mm -hmm. And we also, with my background in social work, the whole dynamics of the team working together, um, because I saw my son doing things and my, you know, my daughter doing things and my husband and I, and then we just couldn't stop talking about it dinner mm -hmm. that night. Like, mm -hmm. I can't believe that, you know, somehow, you know, you started this idea, but that got me thinking of my idea. And then that didn't work either. But then you thought of a different idea and it worked, you know? So it just adds for a lot of conversation afterwards. Yeah. So what is next for you? What future plans do you have? Or is the big future plan the new room that's going to debut soon? The new room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's consumed a lot of our time, but um, we're looking forward to it. I am too. Yeah. Well, that's about all that I have. Do you have anything else that you want to add? No, I think we... we've covered most of it. Awesome. Well, before we go, the secret word to enter online for that gift certificate is escape. That's E-S-C-A-P-E. I had to make sure I spelled that right. <laughs> so thank you, Mary, for joining me today. Where can people find out more about Urban Escape Games? They can just go to our website, urbanescapegames.com, um, or they can feel free to call us at 678-805-2189. Awesome. Thank you again to the Alpharetta Convention and Visitors Bureau. Don't forget to check them out at awesomealpharetta.com. Be sure to find Made in Alpharetta anywhere you listen to podcasts, including on iTunes. You can keep up with me on Facebook by searching Kathleen Sturgeon or on Twitter at KS Sturgeon. And now you can connect with Made in Alpharetta on Twitter at Alpharetta Made. Thanks again, Mary. Thank you, Kathleen.